The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, I'm Carl Seidel, host of The People's View, sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee. And if you want, we meet at the Crown Plaza the second Thursday of every month. And if you want to find out more information, you can go to our website at NashuaGOP.org. Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello, and welcome for all you Republicans out there. I think uh, we ought to congratulate you for coming out and voting in Nashua. We gained 10 uh, representatives in Nashua, so that we're now 13 uh, Republican House uh, members, and uh, we got, gained one senator also from uh, Nashua. So uh, I think we did a good job. Thank you for coming out and voting for all of us. And uh, we hope that uh, we hear from you and we, uh, we're all ready for the 2016 election. But tonight, our guest is one of the aldermen, uh, yeah. Dan Moriarty. Uh, Dan, uh, how are you? Uh, doing in the, the, with the election. Are you happy with that, too? I mean, for the town? Uh, well, for, there's a lot of aspects of the election. And, and you know, in general, my conclusion is it was a huge uh, victory for the Republican Party in the mm -hmm. state and across the country. But my two favorite candidates lost. That was Scott Brown and Walt Havenstein. Well, I know Walt was uh, with the BAE, and you're with yeah. BAE. And uh, yeah. almost anybody I talked to was at BAE was for Walt. Yeah. And uh, I yeah. agree with you. He was a very, very appropriate was person guy. for us. But uh, and I told a lot of people that I was on Walt's campaign before Walt was on Walt's campaign. <laughs> and same with Scott. I was on the Scott Brown's campaign before Scott Brown was on Scott Brown's campaign. Well, well let's talk to about Nashua a little bit more. I mean, that's something that okay. um, for, fortunately we can't yeah. change about the state, but uh, we'll yeah. see what happens in two years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you are uh, been on the Alderman, and you're on um, Alderman at large, right? And yeah. uh, we had a couple of things that were on the ballot. Uh, one was the spending cap, and I was wondering, yeah. uh, that's fairly close from what I understand as far as the yeah. ballot vote is concerned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What did you feel about it? Number one and number two, uh, you had brought up something about the aldermen's uh, looking at spending uh, something that would have exceeded the current cap. Right. Right. So first, the the, the there was an amendment. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the ballot, and it was to change the way the spending cap was, was calculated, mm -hmm. uh, and it passed. I was against it. Uh, this I, is the alderman's vote, vote. Well, I was against both of them, and they, okay. they all passed, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So they, no matter what you do, the city, the, all, the board of aldermen of the city of Nashville figure out ways to spend money, too much money. Uh, the vote last, on Tuesday, the, the citywide right. vote on the ballot was the amendment uh, to change the way the, ca the, the spending cap is calculated. So just a quick summary, there is a spending cap. It's different than the state where there is a, you, you just have to balance the budget, but in, this, in, this, in right. the city of Nashua, there is a spending cap. Which varies each year. Which varies each year. So let's just say the spending cap is 2%. So mm -hmm. that means it's 250 million this year, next year it'll be 255, and the year after that's 260, and the next year is 265 million is how much the city is able to spend mm -hmm. in the general fund. That amount that it goes up, that's the key part. The amount that it goes up every year is based on the inflation rate, the mm -hmm. CPI, Consumer Price Index, the CPIU, actually, Consumer Price Index Urban. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been using for 20 years now, 10 years, I guess. Uh, it's the average of the preceding three years CPI. So this last year, it was 2%, 2.1, actually. So the ballot initiative, this amendment, was to change the number. Mm -hmm. There's still going to be a spending cap. It's still going to be some average over a number of years, but the percentage will become from a different number. 
that different number had to do something more with how a uh, a, a city operates because right. they, they buy something different be than the That's average the family does. That's uh, the claim. The proponents are saying, well, the computer price, the consumer price index doesn't accurately reflect what uh, cities ha spend money on because they don't buy groceries. And so we need to pick a different. So the proponents searched high and low and found a different index, which is, I'll have to read more about it, but essentially it's an average of what municipalities spend. Mm -hmm. so, so in some sense, instead of, I believe the spending cap should be, the way it was, should be based on what people can afford. That's right. That's a little different perspective than what yeah. they were pushing. They're saying what it should be based on what the city governments actually spend, mm -hmm. which is unlimited amount in some sense. But you're saying that this should be based <laughs> on what the people are can a afford to pay exactly. rather than what the, the city spends right. money so on. Right. It, so it, it, and philosophically, it doesn't matter. Well, philosophically, it matters what people can pay. And I go door to door and I talk to people uh, that are retired, and they're not getting even get even getting a two point one percent. You get military mm -hmm. uh, retired uh, veterans; they're getting one point seven percent cost of living, mm -hmm. a COLA cost mm -hmm. of living adjustment, which is less than our spending cap amount. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the flaws with the argument for this new rate is based on the fact that they said, well, the spending cap of the city shouldn't be on groceries and stuff. It should be based on what cities. Uh, spend money on. 80% of the city budget is salaries. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're really talking about two different things. They, no they're saying that the city spends yeah. money on sand and fuel and electricity and rocks and trucks. In reality, the city spends money on salaries. Those salaries, the rate at which those salaries grow, has nothing to do with this, this index. This new index that they It has want to do to with apply. what the Board of Ed approves mm -hmm. and what the Board of Aldermen approves. Mm -hmm. And if you go a little bit further, we say, what should the salary contracts grow? They should track inflation because they're paying individuals right. and individuals have to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in order for the whole system to be, cons to be in a steady state, to use an engineering term, to be consistent over time, the salaries should track inflation. Therefore, the city costs would track inflation. Therefore, the people's ability to pay would track inflation. Everybody's happy. Right. And that's somewhat the, along the line the way the state uh, did it the last two budgets. They looked at what they, could get, what they were getting as income right. and said, this is your limit on what you can spend. Yes. yes. And so it's really the same thing as what you're saying is that it's the people who are supporting that tax that exactly. we should be measuring it against. Exactly. And we had the mayor on uh, the show a couple of weeks pr prior to this, and uh, she said that it really, to her, it didn't make any difference, although she, you know, she wants to keep it as low as possible. She says she hasn't hit the spending cap in the right. last couple of budgets that she uh, approved. Right. So that's uh, true and not true. Well, yeah, I know there's a little manipulation in there, but right. uh, uh, technically is the way they reported that counting-wise, she didn't exceed the spending account. Right. And she says that was her intention. You know, no matter what, we're going to look at what, what we think the people can um, reasonably handle as right. far as the tax rate is concerned. Right. And right. She's, her objective was to keep it down. Sure. So I, I think either way, either you or her approach is good. Keep spending down. That's how the people are going to have to uh, support it. You'd, we'd like to, yes. Uh, we, the, there's no law that says we have to. We have to spend all of that's right. allowed on spending cap. Although, in for all practical purposes, we do. We, 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 the spending cap may be $250 million and we spend only $249,900,000. Right. <laughs> so we come within a very You come percentage. close to it, but you we don't sure hit it. We sure do, yeah. And some of those votes <clears throat> take out money and don't always, don't always make it. Uh, uh, but this year in particular, there was... Uh, the amount of obli the obligations we had due to the, the salary contracts plus other growth was starting to was going to make it look like we were not going to be able the mm -hmm. the mayor was not going to be able to get everything to fit under the spending cap. Mm -hmm. So she came up with a clever idea of of submitting the budget in two pieces. 
one piece was the general fund, the normal mm -hmm. budget. The budget book's about 300 pages long, and it submitted that. The other piece was the special revenue fund for paving. So what she had done was she took what normally was included in the spending cap and took it out and created its own uh, revenue fund. It's analogous. I might have I've said this to other people. It's analogous to if you had a, a forest and you're, you have a limit on how many trees you can cut down in the forest, mm -hmm. if you just say, well, we're going to redefine this section of trees is no longer part of the forest, and you cut all the trees down, <laughs> you still bet your, that's exactly what happened. We just, she just redefined what is a, a part of the general fund, and that allowed uh, us, allowed her, us to, uh, the Board of Aldermen, everybody, to spend extra money. And how does it, where's that extra money coming from? Is that figured in the tax taxes? Taxes comes out as taxes. Just comes out of taxes. It was pitched as look, this this new revenue fund is being paid by the state grant and being paid by you guys as oh, uh, and registration fees, I which see. is true. But that state grant and the registration fees used to be in the, regular. Be in the regular fund. <laughs> so, you, so not only do you pull out the, the expense, you pull out what was paying for that. Now you have a hole in taxes, so they had to be backfilled. Okay. So I don't know if you read the paper today on. I haven't had a chance to read it since the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. There was an article in, yeah. in both the Telegraph and the, and the Union Leader that said the tax rate has been uh, calculated, and it's the the, our, the the property taxes in Nashville went up 2.34 percent. Mm. And so the mayor said, "I ah, good. I'm happy. It was supposed to be below three, but the the CPI was two, 2.1." Ah. So the taxes should have not gone up more than 2.1. Uh -huh. The whole reason they went up 2.34 instead of 2.1 was, was because, because we exceeded whole... the spending cap. Yeah. If yeah. we would have stayed within the spending cap, I, I mean, there, it's like the, it, it, there was no victory in keeping the tax rate growth below 3% because the, 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 the spending cap was 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I well, want to see the, the tax rate grow slower than the the. The CPI. In the CPI. Yeah. I'd like to see that happen. Yeah. Well, and it looks like uh, some of the people got what they wanted uh, the, in this. Uh, well, I, I guess the vote yeah. was very close, and they're going to have to see whether a recount. Yeah, so the is. amendment, back to the amendment, it changed. Yeah. And what were there, 25, there weren't 25, about 25,000 votes cast, mm -hmm. and it passed by, at, fir at first it was, 20, but we found out there were some ballots that got chewed up by a, one of the machines, so it oh. actually passed by 65 votes. Oh, okay. 65 votes out of 25,000 is yeah. pretty close. Yeah, that is. Well, we'll see what that brings up. That has yeah. to be done within the next week, right? Yes. Um, Fred T. Boom already filed the motion, the request for a, a recount. A, a recount. Uh, I've been at the, I don't know if you, you've ever been at a recount yeah, before. Yeah, it's I've really exciting. This. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to make sure you don't fall asleep while you're doing it. Because you're supposed yeah. to watch to make Just sure everything's every handled right. And they go through each ballot. Yeah. And you know, now if it's, we did it for Ward 4. It uh -huh. was a close race. And they did it in, there were two actually two wards, uh, Ward 3 also. And so they had 900 ballots to go through. And they look at each one, they check it. And that took hours. 25,000 ballots? Oh. <laughs> You're lucky it's not a statewide contest. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. The three counts well, anyway, three. you had brought up something last time we discussed about some resolutions that sort of tried to get around the, the spending cap. What was oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier about the, so the, the mayor submitted the budget this past yeah. oh, uh, okay. spring. Oh, okay. This you're talking about. And so she submitted trip. it in two pieces, and one of the pieces was for the general fund, the other piece was for the special revenue fund. Yeah, okay. Uh, from the beginning, as soon as I heard about that, we we're all, all amongst ourselves were like, oh, that'll never pass. That's, you know, bypassing this. That's an end around. And, and I held firm, and I raised the red flag to the Telegraph and Jim Hadadine interviewed me and he had an article published and uh, and I was I kept mm -hmm. I kept look this is I wanted to say look th uh, there is sight of hand going on so I'm calling your bluff mayor mm -hmm. and I kept calling it and and but as time went on suddenly my uh, out my colleagues started sort of dropping off and next thing you know it's like it's just me all alone uh -huh. and in the very end I you know when I thought we were gonna have yeah. you know we got eight votes to kill it uh, we had four, ah. and uh, and it passed. I see. Well, and we're gonna have to watch it as the next one comes up, then, huh? Yeah, this next one, and even some of the people that voted for that fund, that special revenue fund, were grumbling. Well, what's you gonna do next year? Is, is yeah. are we gonna special revenue everything? Because this uh, this coming year's spending cap is gonna be a little tighter than last year. 
it's not going to be 2.1. It's going to be like 1.9% growth mm -hmm. is how much the spending cap is going to allow the budget to grow. Yet all those contracts are still in place. So they're all going to grow. Well, you said there were a couple contracts that exceeded CPI by a factor of two? Yes, uh, uh, most of them, in fact. Uh, the firemen's union came in the closest. Uh, the teacher's contract, uh, the, it, the overall growth was 2.5% mm -hmm. uh, compared to 2%. It does, you know, it's like, yeah, it doesn't sound like much, but it's an enormous contract. It's a large it's, number of And so the large number of people, it's a big contract. But if you look at the individuals within that contract, mm -hmm. they are getting the lowest pay raise is 25 but the average was between 3 and 4 for mm -hmm. the actual employees. Uh, there's some complicated math, which I, I support, and I like the way it's done with this, uh, the, step, the, the, step the step increases. What happens is people retire yeah. off the top, and they come in on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the individuals... Each year, they, they will get pay raises that are larger than what the taxpayer sees. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice way that, in aggregate, the taxpayers pay a sustainable amount, but the individuals, it's, I mean, look, we'd like to have the individuals the opportunity to be mm -hmm. able to beat inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you get promoted or you just have a birthday, you'll be able to beat inflation. Mm. <laughs> so the teacher's contract was, was above uh, the teachers' union contract was uh, two and a half to the taxpayers and three to four for the individuals, which is twice the inflation rate. And uh, the recent police contract was uh, some of the individuals were in around six percent range, and it mm. was depending on what year, mm -hmm. it averaged six percent per year over the next four years. There wow. was an eight percent growth one year. In their defense, two of those big jumps were based on uh, pension changes at the state. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's their pension, so yeah. yeah. So that that police contract was mm -hmm. uh, it's some big numbers in there. How does that compare to some of the other uh, cities or towns? Uh, their uh, union contracts? Yeah. Uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, I keep an eye. I read the union leader, and mm -hmm. so I can generally see what's going on uh, statewide in, in Manchester yeah. a little oh. bit and statewide. Uh, there, I. There were a couple towns where there, the, it actually went down. Uh, we know in Manchester, the teachers' union is still holding out. Uh, they're not happy with what they're getting. Mm -hmm. But it, there's some of an arms race going on in New Hampshire regarding the contracts. And I figure, well, who's the highest? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, who, who gets that? And exactly. then everybody compares themselves to them. Y yeah. Uh, uh, one of the aldermen, one of my colleagues, she was saying about the, the police contract, well, if we don't stay competitive, how are we going to stay competitive if we don't give these 6% pay raises? Mm -hmm. And I've thought about that. Like, it's just, well, first of all, just to give some context, I'm going to find, dig up the actual numbers. I just actually make the request. The most recent hire, they had like 200 applicants for four, position, four <laughs> positions, okay? I was going to say, there's I a lot of people out there who would like that job. <laughs> right? We're pretty competitive. So... We could cut their salary by $5,000 a year, yeah. and we're still going to get 200 applications for four sure. candidates. I'm pretty sure about that. So the justification that we need to be competitive, again, it's, 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 it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, second answer to that is, uh, well, MIT Lincoln Lab, where I used to work, they underpay by this, the industry by ten mm -hmm. dollars to $20,000 a year. Why? Because everybody wants to work there. Mm -hmm. So the Nashville Police Department... It's a great police department. Okay, mm -hmm. I've been complaining about their contracts, but it's a, it's a well-run organization. Mm -hmm. And people want to work there. Uh, Chief Susing's retiring. Uh, we're, you know, we're all sad to see him go, but it, it really is. It's, uh, it's, it's a drama-free organization. There's no brutality. We don't hear a lot yeah. of complaints about it. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what draws people. Mm -hmm. So based on the fact that it's a high-quality police department, we should actually have the bargaining strength right. to not have to lead the arms race of salaries in New Hampshire. And, and, and dollars, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing it and having a better, op, a better environment for the Yeah, a better employees. environment. When I went to uh, high school, it was a private school, and all the teachers were paid less than the public yeah. schools because they wanted the, to be part of that environment. Mm -hmm. And so as long as the, you know, the, the chief can, can motivate that way, it's not necessary Mm -hmm. to do these. But ultimately, it comes down to the Board of Aldermen. And we don't have the votes. 
Let's do a little switch now. Go over to the next thing, a big project in the town is the Broad Street Parkway. Yeah. Can you give us a little update on that? And I'll what, try. Are there any problems that I'll try. are coming out? Um, I'm, I'm on the finance committee where we, we approve the contracts as they come through. So I get to see an update. I get to hear mm -hmm. an update. And, and from different fashion, I get to see the financial update. And we did have Mr. Bancor, mm -hmm. John Bancor, I think. He's the... Uh, engineer who's managing the whole project, the project for us. Ahead. Uh, he came and gave a presentation. Great guy to, to get information from. A little dry in his presentation. He's an engineer. He's mm -hmm. more of an engineer than me, apparently. He sort of stays calm and quacks go quietly and sticks to the facts and never complains and he's super polite. I love having that guy uh, in to give presentations. Uh, the issue at hand was a, one particular contract. It's the last major contract. It's for the South portion. Uh, basically, the, the, the bridge the, that goes across it's, the river? It's for the, the mill yard area, oh, I the mill yard area to, to do the roads and mm -hmm. stuff there. And nobody wanted to bid on it. There was only one contractor that bid, and the bid came in really high. Mm. Well, it's really high, meaning it was... Uh, over the estimate. Over the estimate. You know, the engineering estimate was six million, and they bid like seven million, or mm -hmm. seven and a half million. All the other bids came in a little low because everybody was really hurting for business. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was a good time to build a road. Uh, everybody was out of work. Now it's not the case anymore. Everybody's got business, but this is a section nobody wanted to touch uh -huh. because it's in the old part. And, and they don't know what you're going to find. They didn't know what they were going to find. They're like uh, underground utilities. Yeah. It's like going into an old house and asking a plumber. Uh -huh to fix your plumbing <laughs> before he pairs the wall down. Well, and so they don't hit any gas lines. <laughs> exactly. And that's what they, they there's this one pipe, yeah. one section that they bid. It was like, I forget, it was like $500 a foot or something. And it's like a mile's worth of pipe. Uh, this is an insane cost. Uh, but they, they, they're on the hook. Yeah. Like, well, it's, it was a fixed price. It was an odd way of doing it. Fixed price contract means you bid, you mm -hmm. build it. If no matter you, what. No matter what. <laughs> and if you can get it done yeah. under what you bid, you get paid yeah. no matter what. But if, you know, if you hit, uh, if you, if you hit dinosaur bones, <laughs> there goes your profit. <laughs> well, let's hope you don't have that problem. I see that yeah. in the paper today that they opened the bridge, first bridge across the yeah. uh, parkway. Yeah. So that's, a, that's one accomplishment. Yeah. And in Little Florida, I was getting calls from a few people because they, they weren't getting any uh, uh, police presence. They weren't. It, oh, wasn't, really? the, it wasn't the police fault. Uh, the police weren't getting paid, and they uh. weren't being. They weren't getting asked to go there. Uh, we had to complain and push really hard on the mayor's office, and she was sort of hesitant. And so, for the people in Little Florida, they couldn't go out Fairmont, and that's yeah. the Baldwin Street Bridge yeah. uh, had a light. So they had to go out the Fairmont Street Bridge, and when it hits Amherst Street, there's no light. Yeah. And the cars won't stop. Right. So they're trying to go that? to work in the morning. Yeah. And they sit there forever. And no one would, no one would let them out. And uh, I passed on that message three or four times, and mm. they're like, "Well, it's not in the budget." Oh well. But they had a meeting, and then the mayor came to the meeting, and all the they, she got lynched. And <laughs> well, there's another large uh, question coming up: is this the deal with the railroad? You apparently have had some update from uh, the mm -hmm. commission that's studying that, and their reports due out formally. Yes, uh, on November. 20th, I think it is, or the 21st, uh, it's a Thursday before Thanksgiving. Okay. I know it's the Thursday before Thanksgiving, 7 p.m. at the public library. Okay. They're going to have a public hearing on the study as it currently stands. Can you give us any preview on that? I or? will be happy to give you a preview on it. Uh, based on, uh, I'm the chairman of the Planning and mm -hmm. Economic Development Committee, PEDC. Uh, I had the chairman of the N National New Hampshire Transit Authority. I had that chairman on as a special guest uh, several months ago. Mm -hmm. I started the presentation by, by reviewing the previous studies. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit more. Um, a year or two years ago, I think it was, we had, uh, we had Executive Counselor Wheeler mm -hmm. was invited into the Board of Aldermen. Uh, and I was new on the board. And he just got pummeled by the by the board of all of them because his position he had voted no on that on that mm -hmm. that study. One of the things he said, I'm in the back eating my dinner because mm -hmm. it wasn't a board. It was before the board of all of them. And so I was in the back eating my dinner. Everybody was in there, and I'm just eating my sandwich and getting ready to go. And I heard him say, "We've already studied this three times already." Mm -hmm. And I go, 
Really? So mm -hmm. what I did to prepare for this PEDC meeting, I went and pulled up all those studies and read them. Mm -hmm. One of them was like 300 pages long. It was like unreadable. Uh, it was old, but there was a really good study that was done pretty recently, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it had a great summary, and he was right. We had a study. We already we knew a lot about yeah. it, and so I could understand what his point was. And when I was, on, when I was trying to get this rail ad hoc mm -hmm. committee uh, going, and, and my, my colleagues were saying, no, we don't need to do that. We need to wait for the current study to come out. I asked, have any of you read it, the study that already has been out? And none of them had even read what we already had. <laughs> so first read what we've already sure. spent money on and then decide what we need to study next. So here we are to coming up this Thursday. What the study said in the past and what I know currently, it will cost about $160 million to extend commuter rail from Lowell to Manchester Airport. They're not going to do Concord. It was going to be, there were going to be f at least four stops, Nashua, Manchester Airport, downtown Manchester, and Concord. We'll probably get two stops in Nashua and Manchester Airport and downtown Nashua. So, th but it's not going to go to Concord because there aren't enough, there's enough ridership yeah. to, to justify it. So $160 million to get it from Lowell to Manchester. And it's going to cost... That's uh, downtown Manchester? Or down, the downtown Manchester. Downtown. It'll come through the airport and then downtown. Okay. So the, yeah, um, the uh, projected r ridership will be about a half a million people to a million people a year. And we have only about a minute left in our talk, so okay. we can so summarize. So we'll it. need to subsidize it at a rate of about $10 million a year. If you split it between the four major cities, Nashua needs gonna, is going to need to subsidize maybe $2.5 million a year which actually isn't that bad. If mm -hmm. you consider the, the commuter rails projected to generate $120 million a year of new economy. Mm -hmm. So the question for everybody is, if the commuter rail is gonna create $120 million of new economy, but it needs $10 million to mm -hmm. keep it running, is that financially feasible? Mm -hmm. And is that something that everybody wants? And is that gonna take away from the bus or is that uh, including the bus situation. The bus is already getting funded at $5 million a right. year, so right. you wouldn't do both. You would, the bus would probably be rerouted so the bus would go to the train, but it wouldn't make sense to fund the bus at $5 million a year and the train. Does this commission look at the transportation east-west-wise around the, the southern part of... Uh... The, trail, the New Hampshire Rail Transit Authority won't. Uh, that's just for right. the rail, but there is a commission that does that. The DOT does that. Is that coming out about the same time or what? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, the okay. the uh, NRPC, National, the Nashua Regional Planning Commission, mm -hmm. they study that a lot and they I give see. reports. Uh, okay. They actually so we'll came, have to get them on here and listen yeah, to that. Yeah, and they came to PEDC and I got a, plenty of information to, to offer on that. Okay, Dan. Well, if people don't get their questions answered, they can call you on your radio station now. You're oh, that's right. That's right. I'm on the radio every other Wednesday. Uh, I was on yesterday. Yeah. So every other Wednesday, WSMN AM 1590. I'm on at 8, uh, 830. 830 in the morning with George Russell Radio sh uh, okay. Show. You can call in 816-0019. Uh, you can call in 816-0019. You'll be the second person to call in. <laughs> uh, or you can just call me directly. Call, call me 891-1020 okay. and uh, ask me questions. And if you want me to come to your house, <laughs> call me 891-1020. Well, you, you provide a up. service yeah. all the way around. Huh? I'm out there knocking on doors every, okay. every week anyway. My little, okay, well, good. Got to figure out where to well, go. Well, I think our audience will appreciate that. They need an active uh, person there standing up for some of the things that yeah. they believe in and keeping our taxes down. Yeah, yeah. We can accomplish all we need. We can do, don't have to reduce services. Mm -hmm. We can do all that if you're, if you're just efficient and you watch the dollars and you spend it correctly. No need to raise taxes okay. as much. All right, Get very good. In. Well, thank you again for coming on the show, and we'll have you again probably in a few months yeah, to sure. see about what happened with this rail study and what happened with a few of the other things that okay. we brought up. Okay. So thank you. All right, thanks for having me.
The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.